Hello humans, it's just Martine, and today we're going to be covering five productivity mistakes that you're making that kill your motivation. Number one, you're not batching your work. The concept of batching is very simple. It means that you have one certain type of task, let's say that it's checking your emails, and instead of doing it sporadically throughout the day, you sit down and you have a certain time that you do it. You do it all in one, batch. Crazy. If you aren't currently batching your work, then you're probably wasting a lot of time jumping from activity to activity. And I know sometimes you need the motivation of switching from activity to activity, and that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about never ever batching your work or not batching for a single task of your work. Checking one email and then going and doing something else and then checking another email is not going to be any easier for you. And in fact, your brain has to switch what it's thinking about, so it's probably a lot harder. Not to mention that when you don't batch your work, you often have to decide what you're doing next, and then you run into decision fatigue. Decision fatigue is a real thing, and it happens to everybody, and it basically means that there are only so many decisions that you can make in a day before you can't make decisions anymore, or you can't make good decisions, more like it. And you can easily avoid decision fatigue by batching your work, by saying, I'm going to spend the next hour doing emails and only emails, or in the case of, say, my life, I'm going to spend the next while doing biology lectures and only biology lectures. I'm not going to switch from thing to thing or choose what's next on my to-do list. This is my focus. So I have to make less decisions over time and I get more done. And I don't hit that threshold for decision fatigue as easily. The second mistake you're making with productivity, and I'd almost bet money that this is true for 99% of the people watching this video, is that you're being unrealistic. If you make a to-do list of everything that you could ever aspire to to do in a singular day, I promise you, you won't finish it. And in my experience, when you don't finish a to-do list, you feel like a failure, whether or not you are one. You could have done the most difficult thing. You could have done so many things and just had one thing not checked off and you're still going to feel like you didn't accomplish your goals and that's going to zap your motivation right out of you. But lucky for you, I have a couple of tips to help avoid this in the future. The first is to rely on short to-do lists. You can always do more in a day than you have on your to-do list. Add tasks to like a bonus or done list and of writing them on your to-do list, but make your to-do list short and manageable. If you think it's manageable, take one more task off and then it probably is. The second is to plan for your breaks. Make sure that you know when you're going to take a break. Make sure you have a plan in mind for if your day doesn't go like you thought it would. And three, find ways to celebrate your successes. If you get something done, give it a big check mark. Give it a star next to it. Give yourself some type of reward, whether you look at yourself in the mirror and say, good job, you did something today, or have a treat for if you finish your whole to-do list. But again, make that to-do list shorter than you think anyway. Personally, I have a running to-do list for the week, but then I make different to-do lists on each day in my bullet journal. By the way, comment down below if you want a video on my bullet journal. And I assign tasks to different days. So once I get all of today's tasks done, if I still have motivation, I'm going to be like, I'm going to do some of tomorrow's work. And that is the most motivating feeling. You go into the next day knowing, I already got a head start on this to-do list. But also, don't expect yourself to get a head start on to-do lists. Be okay with accomplishing what you want to today. Most of the people I know are also so bad at predicting how long something is going to take them. Always overshoot it by a lot. If you think it's going to take you an hour to film a video, get it in your head that it's going to take several hours to film that video. If it's going to take you one day to write a paper, probably set aside a week. Personally, I am, shall we say, hashtag blessed to fit into a category of people who overshoots the amount of time it will take to do things, and this always helps me feel super productive and accomplished. So always over predict the time. The third big mistake you're making is comparing yourself to other people. I know you're thinking that I'm going to give you some magic tip to be more productive, but this is about productivity and motivation and how your productivity affects your motivation. And there is nothing worse for your motivation than comparing yourself to other people. Unless you're one of those people who like only thrives off of competition and like that's the only way you can get anything done. But I'm going to guess that most of you aren't that way. So if you see somebody online that has like a 20 item to-do list and they cross everything off and then they did some things extra and whatever, know that their to-do list is different than yours. Know that their priorities are different than yours. Know that their brain works different than yours and none of those are bad things. Stop comparing your productivity to the productivity of other people or else you're only going to be unhappy with the things that you accomplish. And when you're not happy with the things that you're accomplishing, you have no motivation to continue. You're just driven by this existential dread that you'll never be good enough. That's not motivating, that's depressing. The fourth mistake that you're probably making is not taking the correct breaks. Taking a break is all about giving your mind and body time to chill from like sitting at your computer for a long time or sitting in a weird hunched over position for a long time or say if you're doing manual labor from 
working hard outside under the sun, all of those things. But there are right and wrong ways to take breaks. I'm not saying you can never binge Netflix. We all know we're going to sit down when the new season of The Politician comes out. All I'm saying is that if you're only breaks are these types where you're just ingesting social media or a show or something you're not going to feel relaxed you're not going to feel like you took time off your brain is going to be constantly going so reassess all the time what types of breaks you're taking have you been outside today have you hydrated have you gotten yourself a snack have you stretched have you read something have you watched an inspiring video like this one just sitting and scrolling on instagram is not going to make your break feel worth it and time is going to go down the drain and you're going to feel like you didn't actually take a full break. I know that an hour on TikTok feels different from an hour out in the real world. So do yourself a favor and take the right kinds of breaks for you. And the fifth mistake you're making that is messing with your motivation to get stuff done is that you aren't checking in on yourself and your goals. Extrinsic motivation, like getting money or praise, is helpful sometimes, let's be honest. But the only way you're going to be happy and motivated to really do things is through intrinsic motivation, which is motivation that comes from inside. And one of the only ways to achieve true intrinsic motivation is to understand your why. Why are you doing this? What is it contributing to your life goals? What are your life goals? What are the tasks that you need to do to fulfill your life goals? If you have a goal that matters to you to read 100 books this year, every time you look at a book and look away from it when you're only sitting at like two books read for the year, ask yourself, why do I want to read 100 books this year? Why am I not reading? Why am I struggling with this? Why am I not feeling motivated? If you don't ask yourself these questions, you're going to hit a slump of motivation and you're not going to know how to get out because you don't understand the problem. You don't know why it matters to solve the problem, all of those things. And if you go and you assess and you think, this doesn't really matter to me at all, great. Stop working towards that goal. Drop it, find a new goal that you do find motivating, that you do care about, that you do have a why for. All right, so those are the five productivity tips you're making that are ruining your motivation. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and comment down below which of these is your biggest problem and how are you going to fix it this week? And subscribe for more reading, writing, and college lifestyle content on Wednesdays and Sundays. And until next time, bye humans, bye.